All right, today's daily rehab is about pelvic stability when you're running. So for all the runners out there who feel like they are losing or not keeping a good enough neutral spine, then this one's for you. Now, what I mean by losing your neutral spine or not having pelvic stability when you're running is when people go from a hip drive from this position here, so hip flexion here to there, what tends to happen if they're not strong enough here or they're not coordinated enough through here and they compensate, what tends to happen is when you go from there to there, they go into lordosis or an anterior pelvic tilt. Now that's not very efficient for the system for running. And what it does, it leads to further problems down the leg like not being able to get the hip high enough. So if you're in an anterior tilt, you won't be able to get the hip high enough. You need to be in a neutral spine to get this into here. Also, when you go through this position here, to get a hip extension, if you're not stable here, you'll go and arch your back. Now that can lead to ongoing hip flexor weakness here and a bit of glute weakness here. So we're gonna try and tidy all that up with three exercises that I like getting runners to do to try and slowly work on their neuromuscular control. So they work on strengthening of the hip flexor, strengthening of the glute, but teaching their brain while they're doing that, they maintain a neutral spine and that helps them with their core strength here. Now, namely, it's the anterior core that's the problem, not necessarily the spinal strength. And now, you can do a lot of other exercises to try and improve the anterior core strength. So if you are one of these people who has got a bit of an anterior pelvic tilt or lordosis, then you need to be working on you know, things like your dead bugs and your anterior tilt and your bird dogs. That's separate. This is about trying to tie it all together and get your hip flexion, your glute, stronger through the movement and using a, a movement pattern to facilitate the strengthening. So what you'll need is one, at least, maybe two bands like this. Now, depending on how old you are, remember this is really good for kids who have running problems or are trying to do athletics and trying to get better at running, but they may not have the best style. Maybe you can spot they're not having their knee high enough, that sort of thing. They may need a lighter band, but an adult may need a green band like that, and when you get good, going to two bands together, which I'll show you. Using a power band like this is too much because it's too short. So when you tie that, it doesn't expand enough. So you need something that is actually long because you're gonna get a full stride with this, and I'll show you. So what I'd set up is this over on something stable that's a long way away. Now what I like doing is working on the hip flexor first and then working on the glute second. That's just my personal preference. So I'd put two there, but we'll just start off with one to show you what we're doing. So to do the hip flexor one, you tie it around in front of your foot, easy peasy. Now this needs to be directly back from the leg, but also enough tension. So when I'm back here, there's still some tension there. Not too much, because otherwise you know, you're gonna find it's too hard to get to the top, but there needs to be a little bit of tension there, because you're gonna go back about sort of 10 degrees that way, okay? Now, good thing about this is, when you stand on, say, the right leg, I'm training my left leg, right? But when I'm standing on my right leg, I'm gonna be working on all the stability components of my leg on this side, because remember, this is the leg I need to stand on when I'm running forward, this needs to be strong as well. So you'll find you'll start working on a lot of hip and glute stability on this side, okay, while you're strengthening up the hip flex on this side. Now, what you're gonna aim for is this sort of movement. But to help you with the stability, what you need to do is time your arms in coordination with your hand. Now when you're running, when the left leg goes up, the right hand is up, okay? Not the left hand. And this is really good for kids to try and train them to how to move their arms, is to try and teach them, okay, opposite hand, you start with the hand up and then you lift the leg and that's where you start. So when you come down, you just swap hands and then you return again. They're always gonna get it right. So if you can start with one hand up and then bring the leg, then you'll get the movement correct. So the first thing you're gonna work on is trying to get this knee up to 90 degrees, okay? If you can't get up to 90 degrees, maybe that tension is too much. So just be careful that you don't have too much through here, and so you're struggling to get it up, okay? There's no point you getting, you know, trying to work on strengthening if you can't even get your knee up to 90 degrees, because that's what you need to be doing when you're sprinting. So make sure that tension is not too much stuff. You can always add another band, always add more, always add more tension as you go. Once you've got it up to 90 degrees, you want to then try and, as you come backwards like this, try and get that back to just past your hip, but maintain that neutral spine. So the trick is, if I've got my neutral self at 90 degrees here, and I'm neutral here, as I go backwards, can I maintain my neutral 
without dropping through here. So I really have to focus on quite a few things. Balance, work on my stability on my right hand side, and then making sure, which is a crucial part of this, is if I can balance here, keep my hand here, and as I swap, I'm really working on my core. So as I extend, I don't lose anything here, and then bring it back into that position as well. Okay, so that's probably one of the most important parts is apart from stability of that right leg when you're, on your, when you're doing a left, is maintaining neutral spine because that's what we want. We want to maintain, can you keep this neutral while you move your leg independently? Now, if you train that enough, okay, you get that neuromuscular training in there, you'll probably find when you're running down a track, if you're on an athletics track, you don't run in that position so much anymore, you run in this position. And of course, like I said before, you're going to have to work on some core strengthening work to help facilitate the ability to get in that position. That's all well and good, but you've still got to train yourself in this position, which is exactly like when you're running, to make sure that the movement that you're trying to practice is correct. Okay, You're not just defaulting into an extension movement there. So your hip flexor one's the first one. I'd work on that, give yourself sort of rep range of 8 up to 12. You're trying to do three sets on each leg. So just swap from left to right each set. Okay, Like I said, hip flexors first, usually. Then, to do the glute one, it's the same movement, you just flip around and put this one on the back of your heel this time. So I'd always use shoes with this because the shoe helps keep it on, okay? So this position here, you're doing exactly the same thing, okay? So from this position here, start with the right hand forward, you're gonna do that position there, okay? Exactly the same movement. Now, with this one though, what I would do is put this band a little bit higher. So the tension is on all the time. So if you just get that band up a little bit higher there, you'll notice that when, when you're up here like this, there's still a tension there, okay? So a little bit higher than the ground. And again, if you're standing on your right leg like this, okay, you want to be right hand forward, left leg up. Then you find it's okay to hold that up like that. And when you come down, you've got to drive that this way. And again, not go and extend there. Now you'll find it may be a little bit harder to try and keep your neutral spine because the power of here, if your glutes are working, the power of there is going to pull you into that position. Or if you try and pull your leg backwards, you, to try and get it back there, you'll end up putting it in an anterior tilt if you can't stabilize and if your glute isn't strong enough. Now the good thing about this is when you're doing this sort of movement, if I show you this way, when you're from here, when you go backwards in here, you're forcing that hip to extend, you're forcing that glute to work. Now going from flexion means you're gonna fire it a little bit better. That's why I want you up in this position here, not from here just trying to do this sort of movement. You wanna be up from here, going from flexion, which will trigger you to try and extend and activate through there. Now, you just gotta think, when I'm doing that, exactly the same rules, I'm trying to maintain neutral from there, and extend to just past my hip, and then return. Okay, same sort of drill. Takes quite a lot of practice of balance, but that's the whole game, okay? The more you practice on that balance work on one leg, because hey, running is one leg in sport, when you're balanced in that position, the more you're training yourself, can I switch on my core? Can I keep that activated into neutral while I do heaps of leg drive work, okay? And if you can start doing in this sort of position, as you progress and put the bands on, and as you start trying to practice that when you're running and the load comes on, you'll probably find that you get better and better and better movement, and then more and more activation through hip flexion, and the whole thing starts coming together. But this is your starting point. Now, to help with those two, what I like doing is a little bit of rotation work, because these two are all about anterior, posterior work, okay? Making sure you know, we're not going too much anterior to it, we're trying to maintain Neutral, so we've got a neutral drive, that means our body is upright when we are running or sprinting, and therefore you'll get a good power drive through the leg, and you won't leak energy. But there is also some rotation work, because hey, when we run, we do that. Now a lot of people tend to sort of rotate too much as well, so they're leaking energy in these planes, not just this plane, all right? Now that's what, you, when you can work on those two, what you want to try and then achieve is doing some isometric, like anti-rotation work, because we want to, yes, we want to move a little bit in the upper body, but we don't want to move too much, so we're trying to not rotate. So we want to do an 
anti-rotation exercise because the, the swinging of the arms can rotate people too much. So again, this one, you can do one or two bands, okay? Two bands obviously a lot heavier, okay? There's a lot of load with that. So you may find you just want to go down to one band, which is like this. And this one is called a pal-off press. Now you may find if you've seen these before. This is really good for runners. A lot of the time it's done with two knees like that, but for runners, you want to be more in a split stance because that's how you're going to be running. And the kneeling down position is really good because you can control this position here, okay? And this is more like a running position you've got going on here. And what it does, keeps you stable, and it lets you focus on the anti-rotation part, okay? The good thing about this is, when you're in this position, again, focus on that anterior tilt, making sure you're not going into that position, letting the tummy descend. You're trying to keep it in neutral, which does two things. One, switches your core and keeps your neutral spine gives you that power drive through your legs. Two, when I do that, my glute here is activated at the back here, okay? So I've got some stability here and a bit of hammy holding me back here, and I've got my core in the front holding me there. Now this one here then comes into this position here. The band is trying to rotate me, all right? So I'm using my core, my trunk, and my obliques to anti-rotate, if you like, from there. Now this is on, obviously, the off period is there, okay? There's still a little bit of work there. Okay, so I've got, this is my rest period. There's a little bit of anti-rotation work, tiny bit. As I extend outwards, it gets more and more and more and more with the leverage, okay? So from here, it really wants to pull me that way. So what I don't want you doing is trying to do this sort of stuff, okay? We don't want that, okay? This running posture is about anti-rotation, not trying to rotate like in ball sports, okay? It is trying to not rotate. So we want to make sure that you are in neutral and resisting that rotation load and then coming back, okay? And of course, this is going to work you more on your left-hand side. So that side that I'm kneeling on, that's going to be working the hardest. And of course, when you change, just flip over the other way, okay? Swap legs, get your anterior tilt, then for my right glute is working with this one, and you're going to go from there, pushing outwards, trying to hold, against that rotation, and then come back. And these, you'll find that they're not overly muscle fatiguing. They're sort of more brain fatiguing because they're a neuromuscular component of these exercises is a lot higher than just say doing conventional weights. So this is why we want to make sure these ones are done in conjunction with hip flexor strengthening, glute strengthening, abdominal strengthening, to try and get the strengthening component matching what you need to do when you're running. So if you get that transition from just strengthening to the sport, you do a lot better. And these exercises are a nice little bridge in between. See how that goes. See you next time.